Did anybody watch this Raw show and when it was over just think, why do I do this? A little bit. Okay. So I'm not That's the only one. That's every week, though. Yeah. No, this is one in particular. Eh. Brutal. This is the 30th, right? I watched the right show, but I forgot to write it down. Yeah. WWF Monday Night Raw, April 30th, 2001. A limousine arrives. Paula Heyman can't wait to see who's in this car. And the door opens. And a man steps out and Heyman squeals, Oh, look, it's the chauffeur! I knew it all along! I laughed so hard at that. So the actual limo uh, 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 passenger is Stephanie McMahon. And Michael Cole goes to interview her. And now listen, as we've talked about a lot in the show lately, I can be kind of a dick. And I've been a dick a lot to Stephanie. But you know what? <laughs> Stephanie in this segment was so good. So at the pay-per-view, she tried to interfere and Kane booted her in the face. And so she's got all bruised makeup on the side of her face. And Cole's appalled to see this look and says, what happened to you? She says, what happened to me? Kane booted me in the face. He's going to pay for it. And you know who else is going to pay for what they did tonight? Have you seen Test? And Cole says, yes, he's in the dressing room. And she says, I'm going to find Test. I'm going to tell him once and for all to stay out of my family's business. And she storms off. She was a house of fire here. Yeah, but you know what? I am... By the way, there was no RTC on this show. No. Can we celebrate true. that? That is a <laughs> thumbs up. I, I do want to celebrate that, okay? There was one good thing coming out of this. By the way, she fucking brings up Test, and I thought, you know, I love the fact that they haven't forgotten this, that he is a jilted lover. Yeah. But at the same time, I fucking hate that they can't forget this story. I am so sick <laughs> of Test continually being involved in the storyline. And dude, this poor fucking guy. Ah, oh, thank God they remembered. Yeah, they remembered so they can punish him again. Did they ever? Stephanie confronts Test. To make a long story short, she informs him he will face Triple H tonight, and her father has ordered Hunter to take him out once and for all. And Test is cool with that. Didn't they just do a match with Hunter and Tess like a few months ago and Hunter Probably. just obliterated him? Probably. Okay, just making sure him. Vince and the two-man power trip go for a walk. And then Vince comes out for a promo, wherein Vincent Kennedy McMahon says he likes Steve Austin, he likes Triple H, because as he put it, they have reached the brass ring. They've grabbed that brass ring. I thought you... Arrogant motherfucker. <laughs> After all these weeks of doing all you can to bury the Hardys, you did nothing with Edge and Christian. You've got Crash all the backstage drinking all over himself. You got X Pac doing the same thing for six years now. <laughs> yeah, but it's their fault they haven't grabbed the brass ring. Test getting destroyed every time he's on TV, but he hasn't grabbed that brass ring. Mm -hmm. It's too bad this sport isn't fake where you can <laughs> elevate anybody you wanted to at any time. He's such an asshole. So there's two blemishes from Backlash, he says. Shane McMahon beat the big show. And he did that only because of Test's interference. Therefore, Test will face his only real son, Triple H. The other blemish is when Kane kicked his daughter, Stephanie. And they show a replay. And up to this point, I certainly wouldn't say it was a bad promo, but by Vince standards, he was very sweet. It was just there. And when this crowd booed Kane, or excuse me, cheered Kane, booting Steph in the face, every switch he had got flipped. Yep. How dare you people applaud that? How dare you? I curse each and every one of you for that. So these fans are chanting asshole. He's a wildly asshole. entertaining asshole. Yes, they're chanting asshole. And then in the highlight of the entire show. Oh, my God. Vince says, I am not a vindictive man. Yeah. And fucking Jim Ross vomits on air. It's the <laughs> fucking funniest thing I've ever heard. Like, <laughs> this, this is what you got to go out of your way to see. Ross's reaction when Vince says, I am not a vindictive man. It's the realest thing in the whole Attitude Era, his reaction to that line, and it's just boom, and then we move on. Loved it. So Vince announces, which had already been announced, but he re-announces, Steve Austin versus Kane tonight for the title. They bring out the two-man power trip, but then, before anything else can happen, 
Linda interrupts from mm. WWF New York. Okay, I know that we've stated that Linda is a robot. Right. And Proof! I believe there have been some Linda promos where I thought, you know, she's bad, but, you know, the fans like her. She's not that bad. Mm. Dude, what in the fuck was this? This is Linda McMahon is a robot. There was a glitch in her software. She had a very poor download speed for her speech, and there was lots of buffering. That's what it was like. The, the, the two comparisons I had were like an old real player video with a lot of buffering, or she's a character on one of the old Peanuts specials where they, every sentence was like edited from a different bit of recording. <laughs> so she's I didn't also, write... She was also ahead, wearing her pajamas. <laughs> Who gives a shit about that? She, to call she, her a robot is an insult to robots. In 2020, it is, actually. I mean, fuck. She was a, she was a plant, like a house plant out there. <laughs> Somebody was throwing their voice. A robot was throwing its voice to a house plant. That's what this was here. This was this was the worst one I ever saw from Linda that I can remember. So I didn't write down everything she said, but I wrote down parts of what she said. Well, she said that this coming Friday, apparently there are going to be some divorce proceedings, right? That's in there. And she says, I will consider dropping the proceedings, but only if a few conditions are met. I feel, I strongly suggest that Kane should have the night off. But Steve Austin, I'm doing way too good a job, by the way. Uh, don't Steve worry, I'll make Austin, up for it. He is spoiling for a fight and is intent on defending his title. I think he should defend against Undertaker, which also that was, that was also a bad job right there. That robot had way more life. And Linda says she doesn't want to spoil the party, blah, 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 blah. So what the fuck's happening here? They're not getting divorced now because Kane got the night off. Or is the <laughs> storyline is the storyline that she's just gonna keep making Vince do things, but she's still proceeding with the divorce proceedings and he's hoping that maybe this time she'll call him off if I do what she says. What is happening here? I Nobody have no, I have no answer for you, uh, man. I'm sorry. I I failed you, but I I can't explain what they're doing. So there is Linda. I'm not even sure you can legally marry a robot. I mean, it's 2020. Maybe things have changed now. I'm but I'm pretty, pretty sure changed. in 2001, I don't think you could marry a robot. So. I don't think we're quite to Isaac Asimov territory yet. But uh, So Linda begins to speak, and she says, I hate, really, to spoil the Sella Bratory mood. You're all in. With our good friends there in Mill, Walkie. Talks about the divorce proceedings, but says she can delay those proceedings, provided that certain events could occur. Oh, they're going to be delayed. So they're still going to get a divorce. But I instead think, of the meeting on Friday, it'll be next Friday. I guess. I don't know. Austin is spoiling to defend his title. So she books against Undertaker and then closes by saying, So Vince, I don't really want to spoil the party anymore. Therefore you. Besides, I have a lot of fun to have with all of the wonderful fans right here in WWF New York. Appalling. Austin bitches to Vince about facing Kane, even or to face Taker. And Vince promises to think of something. Uh, Taker congratulates Austin and Hunter on winning the tag team titles the night before. Their game plan worked, he says. They won the match. But how do you think they really feel? It took Hunter, Austin, and then in his words, that bitch and the boss to beat a one-armed man. That arm of Kane's is going to heal. And when it does, I wouldn't give two cents for any of their sorry asses. Now tonight, Steve Austin... You got to face Big Daddy Dead Man. I know you can't beat me one on one. You can't. Lydia. You can't beat me two on one. I, I beg your pardon. For one on one. Yeah. Uh, Lillian, read my shirt. It says, try me. I'll make you famous. And he says, what that means is you screw with me or my family. I'm going to hurt you. I thought this promo was fantastic. You could tell that Jim Ross also thought it was fantastic because, boy, did he mark out at the end of that promo. This was great. 
Like, the dead man drove me absolutely crazy because he also wouldn't lose to anybody. And it's going to get progressively worse when, like, Brock Lesnar shows up and it takes forever for Undertaker to finally put the guy over. But fuck, was he great here. This was awesome. Test versus Triple H. Jesus, do we even need to recap this? He goes, one minute, Hunter and his back knee get DQ'd for using a chair. Way to grab that ring, Test! Way to grab that brass ring! The bell rings, Hunter attacks him, he beats him up for a minute, he takes him outside, he chair shots him, he posts him, he chair shots him, and then he puts the steps next to the table so he can powerbomb Test through the table. Triple H doing a powerbomb, by the way. That's a Test! Yeah. Yeah. So he gives him this powerbomb through the table off the steps, which begs the question, why did you need the steps? Mm Mm-hmm. I guess because they're metal, it makes the move more dangerous. But he just powerbombed well, through a table. Frankly, Triple H didn't do powerbombs that I can think of ever. <laughs> I'm watching him yeah. do this move, and I'm trying to figure out how they're going to do a pedigree off the steps through a table. But no, he powerbombs him. And I think it's because he hadn't done it before. Test is huge, and he wanted to make sure that he got enough height on this to get him through the table. I so think they were just trying to kill more time in Hunter beating up Test. That's not impossible. Yes. And then Kane hits the ring and destroys Hunter, so I don't know why he had the night off. Destroying this guy with one arm. Yeah. It's time for The Undertaker versus Steve Austin. Taker comes out. Austin doesn't show. A minute or two passes. They cut backstage where Hunter and Austin are beating up Kane. Taker runs backstage to help. Taker and Austin brawl away. The camera stays on Hunter and Kane as they moan on the floor for a few minutes. Taker and Austin go to the ring. They do a match for two minutes. Hunter runs in with a hammer for the DQ. Dude, I was so done at this point. Why do they bother? Fuck. (laughs) So they do the DQ, and Triple H and Steve Austin, they beat up the baby faces. They give him 50,000 chair shots. They pilmanize Kane's arm. They hit him with the chairs. They destroy them. They keep hitting them. They chair shot them more. They destroy them. Jim Ross is screaming, and this is the key. Who is going to stop them? (laughs) And the answer is nobody. Because we don't have a top baby face. The closest we have are Undertaker and Kane, and they're the (laughs) two getting destroyed right now. There's nobody else. Hunter has run roughshod over fucking everybody on the roster. They've destroyed every baby face on the way up. The fucking DQ finish in one minute, I was just watching and going, I am reliving WCW. I told you all. I said, if you're sad that the WCW reviews are gone, don't worry. It just keeps going. This was Nitro. This actually was. Same this was fucking a Nitro guy on Raw. in the main event, getting heat, it DQ was. It totally finish. Was Nitro. Fuck, there's no baby faces on the way up. There's no. Uh, this is just death television. I was so angry when this was over. I wrote, fuck, this was brutal. This show sucks. <laughs> 